what is going on guys welcome back to another video and in this one i'm going to be giving you guys some tips to dominate fortnite tournaments and without further ado let's just get right into it okay so i'm going to be breaking this video up into three different sections how to get picks the importance of switching tar players and when slash how to go for high ground all three of these tips will definitely lead you to more success in Fortnite tournaments. So without further ado, let's just get right into the video. Alright, so the first tip I'm going to be going over is how to get picks late game. And you probably have heard of multiple people say the word pip, but basically what it means is when the storm's coming in, people are rotating, just shooting at people and getting easy, easy kills. Even off pro players, you can get super easy kills this way. And it's pretty much just an algorithm. Just stay ahead of the storm and then look behind you. And I've seen multiple pro players, when they stay ahead of the storm, they're not even in the next circle. They are just a little bit ahead of the storm and a little bit ahead of the people right on the storm. So they can beam them with their ARs and they're so focused. The people that they're beaming are so focused on staying away from the other people closest to the storm that they're not going to be looking at you. So yeah, this is a super, super good way and I would definitely recommend you guys trying this out. Now moving on to the second tip of this video, this is the importance of switching tar players. And basically, if you're on one tar player, a lot of people that are new to Fortnite tournaments just stay on one tar player the whole game, okay? And this might seem good, but realistically, people start knowing where you are. So they're like, oh, this guy's on this tar player. But if you switch tar players, and by... What I mean by tar players is like the different layers of buildings. Um, so basically, by switching tar players, you can confuse your opponents because they don't know what, which layer you're on. Versus if you're on the same layer the whole game, they're like, oh, there's a team right here or there's a player right here. You know? So, yeah, that's really good if you can start switching tar players more. Uh, it does cost a little bit materials, but if you do have the extra materials, definitely do it. And then, moving on to the last tip of this video, and this is going to be how such when to go for high ground. And I would definitely recommend going for high ground in the 5th to 7th circle, maybe 8th, 5th to 8th circle, okay? Because if you do it, like, in the 3rd or 4th one, and you get really high, people are going to try and shoot you out, and you're just going to wind up wasting tons of materials, and then by the time you get to late, late game, then you're going to have no mat, and then you're probably going to die because of it. So, if you go uh, when, like, the circles are moving, and just start cranking 90s to get height, that's literally it. Also, watch for the people on height and if they drop down even just one or two of them that's a huge advantage for your whole team to just start cranking for high ground because the one or two people left on height are going to be in a 2v3 or a 1v3 so yeah and then also if you go for high ground too late then it's not that important and you should probably drop down a bit to where you're like one or two layers above your opponents for high ground so, yeah, that's it for today's video. If it did help you out, make sure you do drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I'll be catching you guys in the next one.